Today we are going to look at how to make a storyboard. So I suppose it would make sense to discuss what is a storyboard first. So storyboards were originally used, and they're still used in this way, but their first use was in making movies and TV shows. It's kind of a way of taking the script and turning it into a comic strip, in a sense. Uh, so a, a series of images that are drawn to represent the major steps in a plot. That way everybody who's involved in the production of that show or that movie uh, has a general idea of where the plot's going. Uh, since then, storyboards have also been used by authors to lay out the events of a plot before they write a book. Uh, they've been used by businesses to just lay out the steps of any process. So it's just kind of a visual way of laying out not all the details, but just kind of the major events that then get fleshed out as you go on to make the product, as you go on to make the novel. Uh, so if you're writing a short story, you might want to use a storyboard to draw out the events. And more recently, in addition to using a storyboard as just an early step in the process, we've now recognized there's some value in having the storyboard be the end product. So you may just be wanting to make a storyboard and that's the end and you're not going to use that storyboard to go on to do something else. Maybe just the way you're expressing what you've learned or you're expressing your creativity is to create a storyboard. So whatever your use for it is, uh, we're going to look at how to make a digital storyboard. Uh, I have almost zero artistic skills, so the way I make storyboards is using technology to use other pictures, other images that other people have created and just put them together into a story. And so this is a really short example. It's just kind of a four-cell comic strip making fun of jazz music. Sorry if there's any jazz fans out there. We're going to show you how to make one of these yourself. So one of the things I did to prepare for this was I just went on the internet looking for backgrounds. So if you're going to make a storyboard, if you're going to make something like a comic strip, uh, then it's good to have backgrounds. So I went and looked for parks, looked for beaches, and I inserted them. Classrooms, got a lot of, a lot of different settings here, but uh, I made them the backdrop of the entire slide here in PowerPoint. And that's the first thing we're going to show you how to do, is how to take an image that's not the shape of your slide and turn it into an image that fills the entire backdrop of your slide. So I'm going to start where you would start. I am in the desktop version of PowerPoint and I'm going to just click on File and New. And I'm going to open a blank presentation. And uh, sometimes I like to get rid of these boxes. I'm, I'm going to get rid of one of them to show you. If you click on it so you can see all the dots around it, and click Delete, that's how you get rid of it. But I'm going to leave this other one because I'm going to show you that uh, depending on how you do this, this box might not actually matter. A few different options here. Uh, I can go up to the Insert tab and look for an online picture. I'm assuming that you don't actually have the pictures that you might be looking for saved on your computer already. So I'm going to choose Jim. That one looks nice. I'm going to grab that. Notice it says Creative Commons only. That's checked automatically. You can uncheck that if you're not worried about copyrights, but it's a good thing to, to leave that checked. That way nobody's going to have issues with you using their image because if it says Creative Commons then they've allowed you to use that image. And immediately you see this is not the same shape as the background. Um, I have design ideas turned on. You can get to that by clicking on the design tab and turning on design ideas. If you have de design ideas turned on, then this is really easy. Just pick one of these ideas that already has the picture full screen, and then you can go in and delete these other components. Uh, I find that these parts are not deletable. At this point, I need to bring the picture out in front of them. If I click on the picture and choose Format, I have the ability to bring items forward. So now I've brought the picture in front of the circle, and I'm going to bring it forward again in front of that little line. And so that text box that was in the back that I didn't delete, it, it's now gone because I chose the design ideas, and it removed everything other than what you saw on the screen. So, so that's one way to do it if design ideas shows up. Uh, I realize that not everybody in the district has the same options. So if we go back to our original picture, another option is to click on the picture and choose Format. And there's a button here that says Crop. If you've probably used that before, and, and it just gives you these lines to move in and change the size or shape. But what we're going to do, instead of clicking that box, is we're going to click the drop down underneath. And we're going to crop to aspect ratio. If I choose 16 by 9, it makes it the right ratio for this slide. So I'm going to click outside of there now. It's the right ratio. I just need to click and drag to the corners. Don't need this anymore. So once again, I did leave that text box back there, but it's okay. It's underneath of my picture. It's not gonna. It's not gonna show up. Nobody can see it. Okay. So that's our second choice: is to change the ratio by going to Format, drop down arrow under Crop, and Aspect Ratio. 16 by 9 is what we're looking for, and then you move it to the 
the top left corner to the top left corner of the slide, come down to the bottom right corner and drag it out to fill the slide. Okay, so that's our second choice. Third way to do this, add a new slide, get rid of those, insert a shape. Okay, so I can choose to insert a rectangle that's the same size and shape as my slide. I'm going to fill this whole space. That's not the picture I'm looking for. Now that I have a shape here, I can go up here to where it says shape fill. If you're not seeing that it's showing, click on the shape and click on format. Now formatting the shape includes changing the outline and changing what's inside. You've probably done this before where you change the color. Uh, there's even an eyedropper here where if there were other colors on the page, I could uh, use the eyedropper to select you know, exactly some color. I've got gradients and textures, but you can also fill it with a picture. So since the shape is already filling the screen, when I choose a picture, uh, it will automatically fill this shape to just the right dimensions. So if I go to online pictures, and I'm going to go find that same gym, or maybe a different gym. And here's a nice looking gym. Let's choose this one this time. Now, it doesn't matter what the dimensions of the picture was before I put it in the shape. It crops it to the right size, the right shape, the right dimensions to fill the slide. Your third option would be uh, if you are using a uh, Chromebook or a tablet or something that, that you can take a picture with, uh, you could actually take a picture of your own classroom. You could take a picture of somewhere in your school. You could take a picture of anything that you physically see in front of you, and you can bring that in as your backdrop as well. Hey, I am on a desktop computer that doesn't have a camera. Uh, I do have the option to add a picture from my device. So even if I just took a picture with my phone, any kind of camera, if I then save it to the device that I'm on, I have the ability to upload that as an image here. Not likely to have the right dimensions, so once you do that, you're still going to have to go in and format it or take advantage of the design ideas. Okay, so that's how you get your backdrop. Next, we're going to look at how you add characters to your backdrop and then how you make copies of that slide with the backdrop and characters. I'm going to show you three different ways to insert characters. First one would be to go to insert and grab icons. Okay, you can see we have different icons for people here. Not a, not a whole lot of variety, so that's going to be pretty basic. I'm going to guess probably not the one you're going to choose. You can also insert, once again, online pictures or actual pictures if you have them on your device. So I'm going to look for basketball players because we're in a gym. All right, so I have a selection here, and there's a combination of pictures of basketball players with a background, uh, some without backgrounds. The ones without backgrounds tend to be drawings, but not all of them. I've got two pictures of the same person here, so I'm actually going to choose these two because I'm making a storyboard. I'm not making just one image, so I may, I may want to use this in one picture and, and this in the next slide. So I'm going to grab both of those. Okay, right now they're both in the same picture, and immediately you might notice that hmm, um, she came with this black box around her that maybe you don't want. So I'm going to, first of all, get rid of this text here, right? And then we're going to look at a way to get rid of that black background. So I'm going to make this larger. That, that's helpful in what we're about to do. So I've clicked on my picture. I've made it larger. And I'm going to click on Format up in the ribbon here. And if this picture has a background, I have the ability to remove the background. You can see it's not a perfect science. It removed half of her head and part of her foot, but otherwise it did pretty well. Uh, so, and oh, removed a little bit of the shorts and her back leg. So I can uh, edit this though. So I'm going to mark areas to keep. And you don't have to actually draw around it. You can mark the specific areas. That was a little bit too much. All right, so you can be as exact and precise as you want to be. And when you're satisfied with the changes, then click to keep those changes. And then we're going to shrink her down small enough that some of those details aren't really going to matter. Now let's try that again with her. And fast forward, remove background. Now we're having trouble with her hair, but otherwise this is pretty good. Let's shrink her back down to size. But wouldn't it be easier if we didn't have a background in the first place? Wouldn't it be easier if we could just insert people in here without having to go through all that? So let's go back up to Insert and Online Pictures. And this time, we're going to make one small change. We're going to add some letters after our search term. So we get basketball players, this time dot P-N-G. 
So as you can see from our search results, nothing here has a background. Uh, unfortunately, it focused more on the word basketball than players. Uh, if I grab a couple of the images that are on here, insert them on the page, notice that none of them came with a background that we need to remove. That's how you turn a picture around, by the way. Shrink him down smaller. So you can resize all the pictures. You can move them around. I showed you you can turn them around. He's in action. Let's move him over by the actual backboard. All right, so if you are not finding the uh, images that you want, then uh, it is a little bit limited in terms of search results when you go to insert. So if you want to open a new tab in your browser, just for consistency, in instead of using Google, since uh, PowerPoint uses Bing, we'll show you the difference in Bing when you go out to the site itself rather than trying to do it through PowerPoint. Same search, a whole lot more results. Okay, so this is this is nice if you're actually looking for pictures. But if you don't actually want a picture, then you can choose to filter by type. So if you're really looking for clip art, you can limit yourself to clip art. If you actually do want a photograph, you can limit it to photographs as well. Whatever type of image you're looking for, uh, you, you can choose that. In this case, it's a matter of clicking on that image and either saving it or copying it. If I copy it and bring it into PowerPoint. It's going to be a paste, and at that point I'm going to have to remove the background. But if I choose instead to save the image to my desktop, and now insert, instead of an online picture, I've saved it to my desktop, he does not have the background. So if you're going to copy from the internet, you're going to end up having to remove the background, copy and paste. It's an extra step to save it to your desktop and then insert it but you get it without the background, which that step doesn't take nearly as long as it does to actually remove the background. All right, so all of those are interesting, but I'm gonna show you a, a third way that you may or may not have access to. So I've showed you kind of the way that I've always done it before, but just discovered this tool, and if you have access to it, I think you're gonna choose it. If you don't have access to it, then this is the old-fashioned way. So in PowerPoint, if you click on your Insert tab, you may have a box right here in the middle called add-ins. If you do, that's a good thing because it's going to make this a whole lot easier. You click on add-ins and choose get add-ins. It takes you to the Microsoft Office Store. I'm going to click on education to narrow it down a little bit. And I'm looking for Pixton comic characters. If you don't see it there, you can simply type it in in the search box. And there it is. When you click add, agree to Microsoft's terms. And this now becomes an icon on your home tab. The next time you open PowerPoint, um, since I'm logged in, it should know who I am. So from now on, when I come here, instead of having to go to get add-ins, I can click on my add-ins. So it won't necessarily automatically be on your toolbar up here, but if I click on my add-ins, I don't need to search for it anymore. Here's the ones that I've chosen before. So I'll just click on Pixton Comic Characters, and if it wasn't already on my ribbon, it adds it to my ribbon. All right, so how does this work? Let's click on it. Sidebar opens up here. And it says first select a character. Then pick an outfit, strike a pose, and if you want to add speech bubbles, you can. So I'm going to just randomly grab this guy. And let's make this as ridiculous as possible. Choose a pose. Scroll down. There's tons and tons of poses. And you can choose to just add the character or to add the character with the speech bubble. Not all of them have the speech bubble, but almost all of them do. Now I can insert the character. Let's get rid of this one. All right, so what happens if I want to change this later? Here's my character. What if I want to change what it says in here? I don't, there's nothing clickable here. I can't edit this. What if I go back to comic characters? Um, oh, search for a new character. All right, so I can choose recent ones and fix it here, but I, but I can't actually edit this character. So not a real big deal because it shows me the recent ones that I've used. Um, I can go in here and replace him very easily. Maybe that's what I want him to say instead. I will now get rid of the original, and I've now changed my text. All right, so what's nice about this is I can choose that same character in multiple poses, with speech bubbles or without. So as I keep this background from slide to slide, I can change which characters are there. And also, unlike these pictures that I found on the Internet, that it's you know, except for this one where I actually found the same person in two different poses. For the most part, everybody's in one pose, and I'm not going to find that same character or image again. So Pixton allows you to 
have the same character with multiple poses, which really helps you with the storytelling process. Yeah, I could even change outfits. And that might help you indicate in your storyboard that this is a new day or a new time at least. So there's Pixton. Again, if, if you have access to that, that'll help you greatly. But if not, you, know, you do still have the ability to add people, images. And then once you, once you have your characters all on one slide, then I like to go in here and right click and duplicate the slide. And ideally, I'm going to put all of my characters on the first slide. Get everybody all on one slide in all the various poses, and then duplicate that. So as I go from slide to slide, I have everything I need. All i got to do is delete the ones that are not in this particular scene. On the next slide, I might have different ones that aren't in this scene. Okay, so you kind of do all your work up front in this first slide. Gather everything, collect everything, collect all the images you're going to use. So uh, unlike Pixton, these images didn't come with little speech bubbles or thought bubbles, but you can do that in PowerPoint. If I go up to Insert again, and Shapes, click on the little drop down underneath the shapes. Way at the bottom we have what's called callouts. So you have a number of choices for speech and thoughts. There's the difference between speech bubbles and thought bubbles. Thought bubbles are represented as little dots. Speech bubbles, it's all connected. Um, I can, once again, change the background here. I can make this into whatever color I want. And just as an added bonus, I can also right click here and format it. Uh, if I want to be able to see through this, then I can also change the transparency to 50%. So that way I can still see whatever was behind that. And you can type the character's thoughts here. Type the character's words here. White on yellow, that's not showing up very well. So I can choose my text, change the background, or I can change the color of the text itself. All right, once I have my speech bubble or my thought bubble, Complete, resize it, can move it to the, around to the right character, and then it has this little tail where I can make it point to whoever is thinking or saying that. So that's kind of handy. All right, so there we go. There is our background. There's our characters. Here's their thoughts and words. And by duplicating your slides, you can turn that into an actual story. When you put all that together, we call it a storyboard. My storyboard is now complete, but it does not look like a storyboard yet. It just looks like a PowerPoint presentation. So you may know that when you print PowerPoints, you don't have to print one slide per page. You can print four or six slides per page, as well as some other choices, but four or six works best depending on how much text you have in your speech bubbles and how big you want each cell to be. So I choose File and Print, and then where it says Full Page Slides, you can choose different handouts, layouts. So again, four and six tend to work best. And now I can switch to landscape so that the pictures will be a little bit larger. And you could choose to print to a physical printer now. Uh, but you may also know that from the print menu you can select a printer that's not actually a printer. You can print to Smart Notebook, you can print to OneNote, you can print to Kezi, which is actually the language that uh, Kurzweil Reader uses. And there's a couple ways to print to PDF. I will choose Adobe PDF. This then prompts me to choose where to save this PDF. Uh, pay attention to where you save it to because you will then need to go there to turn it in or to share it with your teacher, whether that's through Google Classroom, Google Drive, OneDrive, OneNote, Padlet, however it is that you turn in digital assignments in your classroom. So there you have it. You now know how to create storyboards and how to print them to a format where you can turn them in digitally as well. So have fun creating!